Hey guys, Chapaji here with another DCS video for you. Today we're going to take our second turn on our DCS Liberation Campaign, Operation Lone Wolf. Super original name, I know. Uh, so today's mission is going to be CAP, uh, Combat Air Patrol. So we're going to slap some missiles on our plane, take off, and uh, I guess I look for opportunities to be a badass and shoot some, some F4s out of the sky. So last time we did some air to ground, this time we'll do some air to air. Figure we'd try to alternate it up uh, as best we can, kind of mix it up so it's not the same video over and over again uh as long as the mission provides so yeah so we're gonna do air to air this time so let's hop into the mission briefing room and get the details on the mission i'll see you there all right guys welcome to the official mission mission briefing room I know this is ridiculous. It's I'm such a dork. I don't care. Uh, hopefully this is fun. But this, I didn't want to deal with um, Google image searches and copyrights. And so I just literally took a picture of the classroom on reserve unit. And this is now our official mission briefing room. So welcome. Uh, go ahead and grab a seat. I'll get the PowerPoint slide up. And we will get started with our turn two mission briefing. So if this is the first video you're watching, this is turn two. You should probably watch turn one. But either way, is the U.S. Navy 2005 versus Iran 2015. Uh, the backstory, as ridiculous as it is, Iran declared war on us and our allies decided, good luck, bro, you're on your own. And we're like, don't worry, we got this. And we're a lone carrier group in the Persian Gulf deciding to go to war with Iran ourselves. So that, that that's the mission. Uh, the situation currently, we do have a Marine Expeditionary Force that has uh, landed at Fab Bandari Joss and is pushing forward up to Fab Sarik to capture that first control point so we can gain access to a factory and start ordering ground unit. And I'll make this bigger so you can see it. The control points are unchanged. So all, all the same control points, we didn't capture anything the last turn, but we did move the front line up considerably, just not as much as we should have. I kind of screwed up, more on that later. Uh, SAM threats are technically unchanged. The SA-11 site we seeded in the last mission was successful. We were able to knock out quite a few of the launchers and the search radar, but there is still a command and control van and one launcher remaining. Uh, so we need to be cautious of that because they probably have some kind of launch capabilities even without that search radar. So don't fly low and slow in that area and we should be okay. Naval threats are unchanged other than the slide. I did update the, the label there. We have albatrosses here, uh, Molnia here, two of them. And I'm going to murder this one. You guys know I can't pronounce anything, but La Combatantane Combat Tante. I don't, don't know how to say it. So two there. So we got the, the two fast attack craft. Uh, the albatrosses are corvettes and the Molnia is a corvette. And we have the two Perry class frigates and Arleigh Burke, which I think are destroyers. So that's the naval assets for this. For gains and losses, we did lose an F-14 in the last mission. Uh, so we're going to replace that. This turn, we're going to purchase a new one. Plus, we're going to purchase two new F-14s per squadron, uh, the Pukin Dogs and the Ghost Riders. So that's a total of five new F-14s. We're also grabbing two E-2Cs and two S-3B tankers. So we'll have four of each of those. Again, considering we only throw up one or two per mission, four should be plenty, even if we do take a loss. For the Alpha roster, try to make this slide simple, but we do have a list of all of the squadrons. Um... And, you know, it's green is good, amber is okay, red is bad kind of situation here in the active pilot list. So we have 15 at the Pukin Dogs, everywhere else has 16. So we did have that one KIA. So amber everywhere, we're doing okay. Not great, but every turn we get two new pilots. Provided we don't take heavy losses, we should be okay. Naval assets, we'd lost the one Tomcat. That's the only change. We didn't order anything in turn one, so nothing was delivered. So we got 71 out of 90 at the Lincoln and 20 out of 20 at the Bella Wood. Bob Bondary Josk is unchanged. We surprisingly didn't take any damage um, and lose any assets on the front line. So we have 48 tanks and six Cobras. And then here we go. The front line selected. I had briefed last time the front line stance that we we're going to choose was breakthrough. Apparently I lied to you guys because I didn't set it. I completely forgot. And instead it was on elimination. 
So that might have been a blessing in disguise because we didn't lose any tanks and we were really able to soften that front line. So breakthrough now, which is set for sure, uh, is should be pretty good. We should move 35 kilometers, no problem. Downside to this is that we may not be able to take Fob Sarik this turn. We might need one more turn. So that's it for the, the planning phase. We'll move over into, or the briefing, we'll move into the planning phase and see what we got planned for us. So first and foremost, it's on breakthrough. I'm not forgetting this turn. Okay. And then for my mission is a tar cap. It says bar cap because I right clicked on a friendly unit instead of an enemy unit, but it's a tar cap mission. Our loadout is going to be a little mix here. We got the two heat seeker side, uh, side winders. And then we have four AMRAMs, which, you know, the Fox threes that are, have their own radar system. And then two Fox ones, the semi-active radar here and here. So the idea here is to throw these in here, just in case we get a mixed bag of friendly and enemy aircraft. We don't want the AMRAMs to lose target lock. I'll lose target lock and then they go AMRAM or, or go Pitbull. <laughs> go AMRAM. It, it, we don't want them going Pitbull and choosing a friendly target by accident. So we're going to use the Sparrows in that situation. Uh, then we have our AWACS in our parallax deployment. So the two here and here. And we have bar cap, a four ship there, four ship there, four ship there. And a four ship there, all F-14s. So 16 F-14s plus myself doing cap. Well, that's a lot. Well, look at what's coming at us. We got 14 F-4s coming out of Bondari Boss. And we also have 14 F-4s coming out of Havadaria. So we got 28 ships going against us. 17 cap missions. We should be okay. We also have some strike missions, though. And if I didn't mention it, the air refueler. So we have some strike missions. So the strike missions are each escorted by either a Tomcat or a Hornet, or in this case, the one that's highlighted, a mixture, right? So there's a two ship of Hornets going for the air to ground mission on the strike, um, being escorted by some other aircraft. So for our strike missions, the first one we got is the Scud site here. I'm gonna go after that. And then Ostrich, which is EWRS, Mole Rat to clean off our work, the command and control and launcher there, Mastiff, which I zoom in more, is two M113s, Silkworm is four BMP2s, Sandfly is six E72Bs, main battle tanks, and then Swallow is six m sixty three main battle tanks. So that's the strike missions there, each escorted by their own two ship of something, right? And then of course we have some cast missions in the area as well. From the LHA we have a four ship of uh AV eight Bs, the Harriers, and then two four ships of Cobras coming. And then from Boundary Josk we have a four ship of Cobras. So that's it for the planned flights. We do have the LHA and the CVN moving a little closer to that front line. Not too close. I don't want the Scud launchers or the Silkworm site to be too much of an issue, but we'd want to minimize that helicopter pilot flight time. So the only other thing to look at here is the launch cycles or launch slots. You got me up first and then the two Hawkeyes after that. Then at the 5, 7, 9, and 11, we got our uh, cap missions of F-14s going up. Then the strike mission starting at 13 minutes and each strike package going up two minutes part all the way up to 23 minutes and then or 25 minutes rather and then the last mission going up is our air refueler at the 27 minutes so two takeaways from this is we can't air refuel until at least 30 minutes after the mission start and the last strike mission is at 48 minutes and seven seconds time on target so we don't want to end the mission too early, otherwise we won't have given the strike team enough time to do what we ordered them to do. So that is it for the mission briefing. Let's gear up and I'll see you guys on the deck. All right, so here we are back on the George Washington. Let's get this bad boy fired up. So battery on, APU on. All right, so as that's spinning up, we'll actually close the canopy. 
keep it quiet. APU's ready to go, so we'll crank our right engine. We're watching the RPMs here, and when it gets to 18, we'll move the right throttle to idle. Right throttle to idle, we'll watch the temperature. It's going up, so it's starting. We'll start flipping switches because it is a simulator, and we're not going to blow any circuits. Uh, so we got everything on. We'll set our bingo to 4,500. Okay. Wait for the engine to start. We'll uncage this, even though we never use it. Right engine is started. We'll wait for the DDIs to come on, and we'll do a stop. Flight controls. Flight controls. Flight control. Uh, FCS. Flight control. Assist, uh, flight control system. Jeez. Bit test. With that going, we'll go to our HSI, get our CV alignment started with our stored heading, and start our left engine. So left engine is cranking, wait, waiting for 18. 18. So we'll do the throttle. We see that coming up. Left engine is starting. While that's starting, we'll do our IFF on. Tech in, on, data link, on, radar altimeter, on. Set our radar altimeter to about 300 feet. Why the INS is aligning, we'll do our HMD alignment. Align the HMD. Push and hold the cage on cage until it says line OK. And important, pause the track IR. Cage on cage, fine tune the roll. Cage on cage. I think this is good there. Fine tune the roll again, sorry. And then, then we uh, unpause and hit align again. And the HMD is aligned. Still waiting for the INS alignment. We'll also come down and do our EWR or our RWR. Turn on our dispensers. I will also turn the volume down on the RWR. Uh, master caution stack. APU is off. INS is still waiting. Almost done with the INS. INS is aligned, so now we'll go and put that into IFA mode, in-flight alignment. And then we'll say, Chief, remove the wheel Chief, chocks. Remove the wheel chocks. Remove the parking brake. Copy. Wheel chocks are now removed. Nose wheel steering on high, and... Flight controls. Flight controls. Move up to the catapult. We also do need to do an FCS reset. Notice that on the master caution. And we'll do a pre-flight. When he tells us to unfold our wings. If he ever does. Okay, there he goes. Unfold the wings. Take off trim, and we'll pull up our FCS on this page. Set our takeoff trim to 15 flaps to half, which should be there. Okay. He's saying go straight, now come right. Straight. Right. Straight. These rudder pedals suck. I got the CH rudder pedals, which are pretty good, but I've had to uh, out of the wires a few times, and they glitch out every now and then. We're going to lock the wings, arm the seat, and stop. Wait for the launch bar down. Launch bar is down.
Wait for him to get out of the way. And move forward slightly until our launch bar hits the catapult right there. Add gas. We get over it. And we're over it. Okay, we're under tension, so launch bar up. Launch bar is up. Watch the shooter. He says, look at me, give it gas. So we go full throttle, wipe the controls, make sure no monster caution, and salute. And here we go. Okay, we're off the deck, gear up. Flaps up, come out to the right a little bit. Burners off. Stay low. All right, that's pretty good. Nobody else is taking off anyway. So we'll turn into waypoint one. We'll also look at our kneeboard. Get the overlord frequencies com to channel two. So we'll switch to com to channel two. What we'll also do is hit auto on our waypoints and then hit on our autopilot. We'll go to couple. So we'll fly to waypoint one. It'll auto increment to waypoint. Oh, we gotta choose waypoint one now. It'll fly to waypoint one, auto increment to waypoint two and fly towards waypoint two. Couple is a pretty cool thing. In the meantime, what I wanna do is take a look at our fuel. I want to burn just the middle tank at this point. So we're going to say override center tank. And that didn't work. Just watching these numbers here. Yep, they're all going down at the same. So it will stop the wings. There we go. So the center line is going to go first. So we're going to select center and arm the stores page. We're also going to do master arm on. We're also going to go to set up our missiles. Now I did set up on my stream deck some uh, default views. Like if I wanted to look at the AMPCD, I just hit that and there it is. I hit it again, we go back. So what I want to do is I want to go to the right DDI and select our Sidewinder and set up our radar. So Sidewinder is going to be 6 bar, 20 degree sweep, 10 miles, medium PRF, and hit set. On our Sparrows, we're going to go 4 bar, 40 degrees, and 40, uh, 20 miles with medium PRF. Set. And then for our AMRAMs, we're going to do 4, 40, 40, high, set. Then while we are got our missiles set up, stuff going on, we're going to go size small, greater cross section small. And then for the sparrows, size small, mode normal. And then go back to the right DDI, or uh, to the normal thing here. We'll also pull up our fuel again here, just kind of keep an eye on that center tank. On the AMPCD, we'll choose our SA page and zoom out. To, let's do 80 miles for now. Watching our speed, we're kind of slowing down, so I'm going to pitch down a little bit, and turn off our rate red alt, and move to barometric altitude. Okay, so we're kind of just flying in, uh, waiting for that opportunity to be a badass. What do you guys think? Am I going to live up to being a badass, or am I going to tank it? 
Air to air is not my strong suit. Well, while we're flying in, um, let's, uh, why is my radar frozen? Oops. Okay, I don't, didn't hit that button, but okay. Let's talk about the radar real quick. I want to show off the Azel page a little bit, because I think that brings it all into perspective. With our AMRED selected, if I choose the bar that... Oh. Probably my own ships. It is. Okay. Have to do that anyway. That was them reminding me to put my RWR in the HUD. So, looking at this, if I choose the bar here, you can see on our azimuth over L. So, this is elevation, this is azimuth, right? If I change that, you can see we're looking at changing the height of that box, which is the elevation in degrees that we're looking for our target. If I change this, we're changing, you can see right away we already got a lock to... Which I'm not worried about because these are friendlies. Right? And then... There's a very narrow... So obviously the, the further it is, the wider the area you're going to look. Like, look at that. That's the widest box we can get. But if we found a target here, it's going to sweep this, then down, then over here, then over here, then over here, then over here. It's going to do this like grid search and then come back up and then rescan that. Well, he might be over here by now. So you don't get a lot of updates. So that's where I'm going to go with the four bar scan and 40 degrees. And that's going to kind of be a medium range and medium update. Right? And then the miles that we're looking at here is just display purposes. Obviously, the radar doesn't stop at 40 miles. It goes until it's done, right? So we're only going to be able to see up to 160 miles on a radar screen, uh, but we're not really able to lock anything up until the 40-mile mark anyway. Uh, so that's kind of what we're doing here. So this gives a great representation. We're also going to go into track while scan, so we're not getting a single track target. Or STT lock, because that will notify them that we're locking them. TWS does not. We also have this auto feature, which is really cool. Let me just show that off here. If I choose auto, after I've locked somebody, it will move the radar left and right and up and down as, see, as I see fit. You can see here I'm looking at 45 to 15,000 feet at this cursor placement. Not the radar, but where the cursor is. So if I move, you know, to, you know, 10 miles or so, I'm looking at 27,000 feet to 35,000 feet. If I want to change that, there's a control to change where your elevation of your radar is looking. You can see that moving up here. And if I move it down here. Okay, we're going to turn that down. All right, so we're looking between the ground and the ground. Now we're looking at 6,000 feet to the ground at this location. So moving that elevation up and down changes the search of the TDC location. All right, so I have a hard time locking targets in sometimes because I'm outside of that range. Other times I'm inside it and the PRF is wrong. So pulse repetition frequency. How many pulses per second do you put out? And there's advantages to doing a medium or high, but and it's I'm seeing a bunch of different stuff online. If they're coming straight at you, you want high. If they're going away from you, you want medium. Also, I've seen if they're far away from you without with outside of 20 miles, you want high. Inside of 20 miles, you want medium. I don't know. So we'll figure that out together. So I usually put the cursor in the middle here, and um, 
Just want to check my altitude. We're we're good. Let's check our fuel too. We're almost empty. So nothing close yet. As you can see on our SA page, there's no red. I'm just looking down, looking for red. What a barometric altitude. Hold on. Still nothing on the SA page, so we're just going to kind of cruise to waypoint one or 25 miles away from it. Two hundred and sixty pounds left on that center tank. Remember we're ready to punch it. We got that center selected and we got the stores. So as soon as we hit that, that center tank is gonna go bye bye. Yeah, everybody's still far away. Let's take a let's take a look. Let's at zoom out to 160. Oh boy. They are coming in. But they got a force to reckon with with our Tomcats. Because those AIs are crazy. Alright, we'll do 80 miles again. All right, 13 miles to waypoint one. Yep, here we are, we're turning. So this little switch turns off exterior lights, which is great in uh, multiplayer, so it's not easy to identify you but in this case we don't need to worry about it all right that just emptied let's go ahead and punch off center tank and then we'll select the uh inner pylons for these guys so when these guys are empty we'll just punch that again and we'll have no more bags we do need to put this back though Still no red on the SA. So this is the calm before the storm. The plane's flying itself, so we can kind of take a look here. How far away are they? They're getting in. They're coming in close. So they'll be within range in any second. So actually, I'm gonna come off the gas a little bit. Because I want them to come to us. I don't want to have to go to them. I just don't want my speed to get too slow. All right, well, auto throttle now at about 300 knots. So we got auto throttle. And then for our autopilot, we have couple and barometric altitude hold. The plane is truly flying itself at this point. So I am hands off. We can really kind of take a look at like heads down on on our uh, radar and all that stuff. So I just put in our our HUD here so we know if we're banking or you know whatever. It is a little weird if I turn right this drops down to the left 
it, I don't know, it just seems backwards. Let's take a look at the AMPCD, but it's truly the this. It's a represent of this. So you see how that goes up to it's angling to the right now. Even though I turn left, it's just it's the horizon. Okay, I see red on the AMPCD now. So, sensor control switch down to make it soy. He's at 16,000 feet at 76 miles. So heading is 293 for 75, 16,000 feet. So now that we know that, we can come over to our right DDI, make that soy, and make sure we're set up for 16,000 feet. We're not. We're at 51 to 22, so we've got to bring this down a little bit. So now we're at 40 to 12. We should be good. So if he shows up at the edge here, we know we're going to be able to, to lock him up. And if we zoom out on that, we can see it, right? You can see the red on the radar. He's right there. Now, we're not going to be able to lock him up at this point because he's just too far away. But we can keep an eye on him, and when he gets down to here, we can switch to 40 mile mark, and we should be able to lock him up. And there are two. Sixty miles away, and I'm getting that here. The bra is two nine two for sixty one. These guys don't seem to be caring that they're coming in because they're amazing. He said they're at twenty thousand feet now. So as long as I keep that that number in between these two numbers, we should be able to lock as soon as they're in range. So remember, the plane is flying itself, so I don't need to worry about it. I would like the airspeed on this. That would be... Oh, is that the... That's the airspeed right there. Oh, all right. So we'll keep an eye on that, make sure we don't get too slow. I do have auto throttle on, but sometimes you never know. So they're at 19,000 feet now, it's still within range. And if they come down here, they're still gonna be in range. Like, these guys just... What are they doing? I think one guy just died. You know, we can even... With that... 20? Yeah, still can't get him. I'll make it 40, then. Move that drop down that 40 there. Okay. So we should be getting them on radar any moment now. Just confirming our radar is set correctly. It is. Come on. All right, auto throttles are off. I'm going full burners. I can't catch them. Let me try a different PRF. So that's what I'm talking. Okay, now they're at 11,000 feet. Right high. Springfield 
Maybe they got shut down because I can't I can't catch them on radar. Oh, there's a guy there. 5,000 feet. There, got him. Okay. Oh, I lost him. This is my radar. Auto. They're dead. Springfield Okay. Well, uh, somebody else got them. Springfield So we'll reset. Eighteen miles, ten thousand. Oh, is that that guy? Box two, players out. Got him. Okay, one down. Splash one. Looks like there's a guy to our left here. Let's uh, take a look. Nineteen thousand feet for fifty miles. It's really hard to fly looking at it. <laughs> the HUD representation there. So let's uh let's come off the gas a little bit. Where are we on gas? Twelve thousand, okay. So he's going to come off to the right, so we're going to throw our radar over to the right. Get some altitude, too. SA-11. What? Right, we'll, oh, shit. 
We've been inside the SA-11 site the whole time. And now it decided to launch on us. Okay. So the SA-11 site is hot. I think we underestimated its launch capabilities, so we will stay out of that area. Wow. Get back up in the air. Got one locked. We lost them. Got him again. Got three AMRAMs left. One's hot. Oh, okay, they're both hot. I don't want to get too close because they'll shoot back, but I want to shoot both of them. Box three. Box three. I'm gonna come off, put them on the right. One down.
Okay, we got two destroyed. Just in case, I'm dropping some flares. And we're gonna head away from all the rest of the red there. Holy shit. It's, oh my lord, that's a death trap. Look at that cluster. Oh my lord. Okay, fuel. I just looked. We're good to go to drop these. So we'll drop those who are lighter. And more nimble, because we're going to need that. I wonder if we drag them into us and the F-14s will help. Take a look. Yeah, so we got probably a two ship there, but it looks like a single. At least a two ship there, but it might be a four ship, might be a four ship, might be a four ship. I'd like to go after these guys, but these guys are going to be in the way. So let's... They're not pulling in. That's at 36 miles, that's at 50. So we'll go after these guys, 29,000 feet. So we really need to... Oh, they just dropped off. I think this is a death wish. It's just me going in on this. This seems like a really big mistake going after this two ship. How far away is that guy? 44? Alright, he's the closest. We'll go after him. 21,000 feet. This is a mistake. This is straight up a mistake. Springfield 1-1, Overlord 1-1, Bravo 0-1-2, 480, at 
and we lost them. There we go. Got them. That's going to be a mess. Alright, I think I'm going to call it. We're out of AMRAMs. We do have two sparrows though. Maybe we can do something with that. We're just getting low on gas. Ooh, I did hit him. Sweet. His buddy's gonna be mad at me though and chase me. It looks like I'm getting chased pretty hard here. See, now I, with my sparrows, I go after this guy. But with these guys here, that's probably, you know, one versus two, maybe even three here. It's probably not a good idea, but I'm looking at our... We're almost at Joker here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and head back. Um, we're running out of fuel. We're, yeah. Oh, I'm really tempted. But I don't have AMRAMs, so I can't just throw two out and fire and forget. They're with they're 20 miles away. This guy, he's 27. We probably should. Oops, not that much. Let's burn and get out of here. They're they're chasing me. Let's go do our mix here and that's probably a better idea bingo bingo we'll also set our bingo to 2000 Oh, I really want to get this guy. If he turns cold, I might turn in. I don't think he's going to turn cold, though. Ah, oh, the other guy's turning in with him. They joined up. Six hundred. All right, I'll pull up my HSI. We're going to box tack in. We're 34 miles from the Abraham Lincoln. So let's uh, let's go to COM2 channel one. F5, F1, F1. Marshal 316. We'll get that BRC. Angels 17.5. Stay 3.3. BRC is 236. Alright.
All right, let's get ready for landing. So we're gonna put our HSI at the 10 mile mark. We're also going to put our hook down. We're gonna verify our anti-skid and hook bypass are set to correctly. So anti-skid off, hook bypass the carrier, which it is and start our 30 degree bank. Okay, so we'll come off the gas. I'm down to 800 feet. Put my feet on the pedals. Things seem very loose right now. Uh, I'm going to speed up the 350 knots. I mean, 800, 800 feet. Man, things are really loose. I don't know if the game is. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm getting. Yeah, seven frames a second. Okay, at the half mile mark, kill throttle, boards out, turn in. nose down we don't want to whoa yeah things are not great all right boards in gear down flaps down trim down nose up i guess nose up trim and slow down There we go. Throttle up. So, if you notice, we're at a thousand feet, not 800. So, we need to descend to 600. Six frames a second. This is fantastic. What is going on? Oh my lord. Okay, well we're at 600 feet. Holy shit. Okay. Come on. Stay with it. I got some airline trim I gotta do here too. And we're past the boat. 30 degrees, we want to be 500 feet at the 90, or 640, we got to come down considerably. So the sun's not going to come out this time because it's 3.30 in the morning, <laughs> uh, which is the only time I've had this week to play. Fuel low, fuel low. I know, I know. And we got some wind, so I'm going to cage. And this is going to be long in the groove. Yeah, it was not the best approach. I don't think this landing is going to be as pretty as the last. Oh, I hate that thing. I so hate that thing. There's got to be a way to turn it off. I really haven't even looked, though. All right, I gotta come to the right. I 
I just said that. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, shit. Yep. Bolter. Damn. That frame's just dropped. Okay. I'm gonna try this again. Okay, I got it, but it wasn't great. Bingo. Bingo. You're alone. You're alone. Oh, the frames are terrible. Just got to get off the... Okay. We're going to go ahead and stop here. Whoa, that was terrible. Absolutely horrific. And we'll call it quits. All right, so let's see how bad that was. Let's go to... Um, there we go, okay. All right, so we did 17 planes on the red side, died 11 on the blue. That's terrible. I killed four planes, though. I did my part, I guess. Uh, so cancel all this, and we'll go to the plan. All right, so lots happened. Ooh, we lost seven Tomcats, three helicopters, and four Hornets. It's not great. But they lost 15 phantoms? Oh! Okay, so we took about half of their... More than half their F4 forces. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, um, you know, we lost some folks, but... We did pretty good there. Uh, what about the front line? Where are we at on the front line? 48 tanks still! Haha, <laughs> that's awesome! Now it's set to elimination. Oh, where's the front line? Oh my gosh, look at that. Those are still there. They got one BMP. Those are still there. They got one M60A. Okay. The EWRS is gone. I'd say 11's still there. I didn't do shit there. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're going to call that a success or not. I mean, we made it back. Uh, we did some damage to their air forces. What do they got now? 13 there. 16. Ugh, okay. It's like we did nothing. <laughs> but they purchased. We haven't yet. We got $191 million to purchase for the next turn, which we'll do next week. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining. I really appreciate you guys watching this. Like it if you liked it. Uh, let me leave a comment if there's something you want to see or you don't want to see. All right. Thanks.